You know what's crazy about ZOM 100? We're only two episodes in and it already feels like the best zombie series we've seen in a long, long time. Already one of my personal favorites and it's only episode two. I mean, there's just a vibe and something that hits different. When you have a man, the first thing he does after waking up in the zombie apocalypse, after he realizes he's a part of it really, is he cleans his apartment because it's the first thing he's, he's three years, he's first time he's had time to do it at his dead end job. Once he runs out of a few cans of beer, he makes a beer run and that's his priority. Not toilet paper, not water, not food, it is a beer because he's never had time. The way this show blends the idea of someone finally free from that dead end job that made them feel like a zombie, the fact that now in a zombie apocalypse they're more alive than ever, the way they blend a real zombie intense story with this freedom that he's never had, makes ZOM 100 one of the best shows I've seen in the past couple of years and it's only episode 2. Full live reaction to today's wonderful episode is available on my Patreon. If you would like to see my full uncut thoughts as I watch episode 2 of ZOM 100 Greatness, it's over there if you're interested. Now. I was a huge, huge fan of episode one. I said it, I was like, this is probably gonna be my anime of the season. And honestly, I just feel even more strongly. What I really appreciate about the directing is how we see the same scene at one point from two different perspectives, and it paints a completely different picture. Initially, when our boy walks into the variety store to get his beer, right? We see this girl who, honestly, prior to that, we saw that there was a camera on a bike. So I was under the assumption we kind of had like a hacker or a very smart person who was going to tap into security cams and do all sorts of different things in the zombie apocalypse. Cause right now they still have electricity and stuff. So therefore I was like, okay, some a hacker of some sort would probably make use of it. So I figured that was her. So when the truck is basically barreling into the store and she tackles our boy away to save him, I was under the assumption she had that shit program, not gonna lie. Because from his perspective, he's basically just chatting away, getting his beer and it's a very different atmosphere than when you see it from her perspective. Because eventually we see, you know, first thing in the morning, she's running on the treadmill, she's taking her vitamins, she's very serious, she's very productive, and she's dead serious, right? She goes and she makes sure to get all the essentials, the, the batteries, the food and water and stuff she'll need, but she doesn't take the, the simple delights of the world, which is a sugary dessert. Because as we see from her bucket list, don't indulge in sugar, right? But I like the fact that we can very much see how these two characters are going to bring out the proper versions of themselves. Our boy is probably too, too carefree. I mean, first thing in the morning, hello world, there's zombies on the ground. He's tossing garbage bags at the zombies. It is hilarious, but he isn't valuing the intensity of the situation as much as he should. But he does have a freedom that is going to be refreshing. And I think based on especially the ending, which probably my favorite ending of this anime season, it does feel like this cast of characters that we're building into is going to have a very, very fun life, all things considered. And I think that type of personality is going to rub off on her in order to allow her to have some fun. But I do think at the same time, she will probably bring out a sense of security and maybe a bit of maturity that he might need as well to not just run into the world and, you know, maybe, yeah, it's good to grab some beer to enjoy your life. But maybe we also stock up on the toilet paper while we're at it. You know, maybe there's a way to be an adult, but also finally have your vacation that's the first time in three years. The brilliance of this show isn't simply its beautiful production style. That helps. But I mean, I watched the live action trailer for this, which came out not too long ago, which for those who don't know, the mangaka who wrote this, this story, Zom 100, also did Alice in Borderlands, which also got a live action, which was really good in my opinion. So... I mean, I'm hopeful that this author can go two for two because the trailer for that does look fun as well. But I think the thing about it, whether if I'm looking at it from the live action point of view or the beautiful aesthetic in terms of how they're going about the anime, the thing that sells this is how they're writing a zombie story not simply because there's zombies on screen, but more so how this office worker lived his life as a zombie and now the freedom that he finally has. Look at the moment when he loses his bike, right? Because it gets run over. So he then upgrades to like a scooter, a moped of some sort. He's like, wait a second, I'm free. And then he gets a big old hog and he's doing wheelies and shit. Like it is just, it's freedom at its absolute finest. And while I do think the show knows how to maybe take it a bit back, most of the time it's colorful, it's poppy. I mean, half the time the blood is like a paint splatter effect. And when it does go red and drippy, like it's more intense. But then there's these moments where he's drinking finally at the end of the night, and it's not super colorful, it's not depressing, 
but it feels a little more real. Like the lighting and the mood, it feels like, you know, the weight of reality is finally catching up to him, which makes sense given that they start this with him sliding down the, the rain gutter, meeting two people who are scared shitless for their life, being like, bro, do you want to come in here? Let's let's work together. No, I'm going for a beer run. You want some cup ramen or something? Yeah, get me some two-ply as well. The fact that when he finally comes back and he offers them a beer, you don't even see their bodies. You just see the broken window. You see the blood everywhere. And it really does paint a picture that as fun as this may be for him, there is a sense of dread that at a moment's notice he could die, which is why that bucket list is so important so he can... Basically, at a moment's notice, he might die in this world, so make sure he lives out his life to the fullest. Maybe he'll die in 60 years, maybe he'll die tomorrow, he doesn't know. And the fact that the story is still writing that to be important about his character is a really nice change of pace, because not only if you look at the zombies, they're not going about it one direction, they're not all slow, they're not all fast. Every person who's now a zombie clearly behaves differently, and that makes it a lot more threatening than you typically see, because... Once zombies started running in shows or movies, I mean, for the longest time it was only slow zombies, and then when Fast came in, people were like, holy shit, this is even more intense. But the idea of the uncertainty of not knowing, I mean, one character looks like she's pulled from Akiba Maid War, and she looks like the most violent of them all, and then you have big bloaters and stuff. Like, it's a very interesting dynamic, and they're really doing a good job at making not only the visual spectacle fun, but most importantly, the idea of freedom meets the most dangerous situation ever is a really refreshing change of pace for a zombie apocalypse story. Now, I'm a huge fan of zombie series in general. I love them in books, love them in games, love them in movies, TVs, anime as well a lot. But I do feel like anime hasn't tapped into the zombie stuff as hard as other mediums, right? Not saying other mediums haven't bloated themselves with zombies. They absolutely have. But it feels like when zombie series pop up, I feel like for a long time it was very similar to vampire series. Now vampire series have also gotten a little better recently, but for a long time vampires were just lame as hell in anime, and zombies just, they weren't around often, and when they were you wouldn't really say, man, this is a must watch, this is just like, yeah, it's a pretty cool show. There's a couple exceptions, but it's not the main thing out there. But I think ZOM 100 is tapping into that greatness that you don't see too often, and I love the fact that Rather than me just being like, the reason it's great is because of its colorful atmosphere. No, like, I seen the same excitement coming from even the live action trailer. Like, it feels like they're tapping into that freedom that such a dead-end job stripped him away of. The fact that his apartment looked like it was infested with roaches, not because he was a slob on purpose, but because he was so dead inside and tired that the times he did come home, he passed out in his bed right away. And the fact that something that was so beautiful for him was cleaning his apartment the first day of the apocalypse and then getting drunk. Like, talk about a shitty job, man, and this show is absolutely brilliant. Now, of course, those are just my feelings. Let me know what you're feeling about ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead episode 2 down below. You're gonna keep on watching this one? Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel, and hey, like I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction available on my Patreon, and while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today we have Zvinx, Coconut, Demon69C, and Brandon Logren. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.